Hey friends! Today we're taking a Casio SK-10 and we are adding an alpha jack. Alright, let's take this apart. Now watch out, there's a ribbon right here. That's actually just two wires that goes up to the positive and the negative on the battery container and it is soldered hard right there. So we're gonna try not to damage that. These are pretty old, so we're gonna actually dump out the screws. All right, so uh, we're going to attempt to cut this wire that goes to the speaker output, um, but we're gonna notch this here and here. We're gonna put a switch in somewhere here, uh, and we'll put a jack in somewhere here, uh, and then we'll put it all back together, and what we'll be able to do is intercept the signal from the board to the speaker, step it down and send it out line level. Uh, and then have a switch over here that we can choose either line level or speaker in case you wanted to like take it out and be portable. We're gonna keep its portability and its goofy sounding uh, onboard sounds. Uh, at some point, we'll probably circuit bend this and, and make it more advanced. But the scope of this is we're going to just add a switch and we're gonna add a jack. All right, so the jack that we have just happens to be a stereo jack. You can see here I've got a shield and then a ring and a tip uh, connector. We're only gonna use the tip uh, tab and the shield tab for this project because this is just a mono out. So um, it's just a jack out. You can use a mono uh, quarter inch um, audio jack, guitar jack, uh, same way. We'll use this one. And then I've got this switch here. This is a... Uh, on-off slide, uh, six pole, two circuit. So what we're gonna try to do, let's see if I can figure this out on my uh, wiring diagram, is we're going to try to use it to route the signal uh, either from the board to the speaker or from the board to the jack. All right, I gotta take out this uh, main board here to uh, Get underneath here and try to replace this wire. I'm going to replace this wire with a longer one so we have room to, to work here. Okay, screws are out here. Uh, we're going to pull this top board off. Watch these ribbons, they're not very forgiving. So we've got a ribbon here, another orange connector here, uh, another ribbon here, uh, and there's some screws actually hiding under here that we're going to take out. Worth noting here too, there are two different sizes of screws. You can tell them by the kind of the head. This, uh, like a smaller screw that has a smaller head that goes along the center here to hold the key bed down. Uh, and the other one is uh, around the outside, kind of, that holds the board into the case. Uh, it's worth keeping track of those. All right, let's lift this board. Now, this should be loose already. It just kind of sits in there, so watch you don't damage it. Um, we're gonna pull this board up here very carefully. Now watch out, your key bed's probably loose, so we're gonna start from the back here to protect these ribbons. Just take your time. So the black keys are gonna hang on these hooks right here. So, flip this unit, you can see the white keys stayed in the bed and the black keys kind of stayed stuck to this. I'm going to take the opportunity to, uh, while we have this out, to kind of clean this. Uh, it's dusty. This thing's probably, uh, well, geez, like almost 50 years old at this point. So we're going to probably want to clean this out. It's probably never been cleaned. It's probably been played with by kids. Definitely played with by me, abusively, goofing off. So we're gonna carefully um, take up the black keys here. Joe, so, so slow. We're gonna take them slow. They're probably kind of stuck on these little notches here. We're gonna pull them out gently and the black key bed's free. Um, this feels like very brittle um, kind of plastic so I'm gonna be extra careful here with these two um, these buttons here 
these buttons work as follows. I'm sure you know this bubble cover just in case. They're rubber and they have a little contact on the bottom. That contact presses on the corresponding pads here, here, and again under here. If any kind of uh, can, you know dust like this, or moisture, or stickiness from stuff being spilled on it, if any of that kind of interferes with these pads, um, dog hair, that sort of thing, uh, it will impact how it behaves. It'll add sort of noise and, and things. There's another pad here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and clean these with isopropyl alcohol. I'm using 70. 70% right now because it's not super strong. Um, you know, 90 is more pure. Um, we're just gonna clean it with a Q-tip, uh, make sure that this this is all, all this dust that's gone. Uh, make it nice, work nice. The same thing with under this strip here. We're gonna carefully peel up this strip and clean underneath it. All right, this is a bit of an ADD tangent, but uh, I like to use, I said earlier, I, I called this a Q-tip. This is a cotton swab. Um, yeah, a Q-tip is probably just, I don't know, maybe it's just here in the States. Uh, it's like a brand name, named after the rapper from uh, a tribe called Quest, but they're really great for cleaning um, 80s dirty tech or any kind of dirty tech, but you can see how much dirt there. That's dirt from whatever year this was made. So now it's never been cleaned. So uh, I'm going to just go ahead and do this um, as a preventative measure so I don't have to do it again in the future. We're going to take some care here to clean the dust uh, on these sensors for the, the selector buttons that change, that do things like um, tell the synth to start capturing uh, recordings for um, sampler. Um, when this button's pressed, it's listening. When you let go, it stops. Um, these are kind of important to the function of the sense. So even though we're not really circuit bending today, um, this will just be preventative um, for the function of the device. You can actually fix quite a few um, dollar store thrift shop synthesizers by just um, cleaning out under these rubber contacts. It's like, look, I mean, you can see there, there's a lot of corrosion and, and just general dirt from years and years of being, you know, kind of thrown around as a, as a toy. So, yeah, why not? Let's clean it out. All right, so this is important too. Like you can see here, if you have to remove this keypad um, trigger, these membranes, you can see they stick through. There's like a rubber thing. Go so slow, because this stuff's super brittle at this point. Um, but these, you'll, you'll pop it through like this. Um, and gently pull up on it and it'll come loose so you can clean under it like this go slow um, sometimes I like to do just half of it so I can keep track of which side I was on um, but now you can clean contacts on both sides underneath this is the actual key press this is the key bed uh, both black and white keys um, you can see it here, I'll clean the dirt off these little contacts too. And then this could be a little tricky, but don't, I like to do half because I don't want to have to think about which way it goes. But in this particular keyboard, uh, it goes up. Um, it's, again, it's very similar. Um, I've seen um, other synths that use these kind of membrane switches underneath um, the keys. It's kind of basic. Um, when you want to get it back in, you see there's a long piece and then a fat piece. You put the long piece in the hole all the way down. Like so. And then hold it in place and you'll go through and actually grab, you can use pliers for this too, but you just grab the little piece of rubber and pull it through until the thicker portion is through the board. And the friction from that will hold it in place. All right, so we let the uh, alcohol dry up a bit so we didn't have a fire hazard with the uh, heat that we're gonna use on the soldering iron. Uh, looks like I have my soldering iron set to 375. I'm going to use a couple tools here. I'm going to use a desoldering tool. If you're familiar, these are pretty cheap and uh, 
readily available, kind of standard. Uh, there's a little tip on this end, button, plunger. Set the plunger down and lock it. When you heat up the solder here, you'll be able to flow it, set the thing on, push the button, creates a vacuum, sucks the solder right off the joint. We're doing these two right here. For the record here, it looks like the white is the bottom socket and the uh, orange is the top. I'm gonna flow the solder and I'm gonna suck it out with this uh, desoldering tool. Solder flows. Pulls it right out. Basically, I just like to try to keep it from getting too hot and clear it so that you can see, uh, like, uh, through the board. So this is now disconnected. We're going to just set this aside and we're going to add uh, orange on the top, white on the bottom. We're going to add a longer piece of wire. All right, we've got an extra long piece uh, of orange and white wire. Uh, I like to use these wire strippers for these small wires. They kind of just grab the jacket and uh, pop it off real nice. Um, there's a couple different versions of this. These ones are, I don't know, Calterm Protect. All right, so I'm going to take this wire and I'm going to make it as small and tight as I can. Sometimes I tin the wire with a little bit of solder so they stay together. Uh, and sometimes that actually kind of hurts me. So uh, we're going to just line up the wire with the proper pad and then I'm going to bend it over so it stays. This out this is a double pull switch so we've got six tabs that's a we're going to call this three columns two rows so we're going to put the input here and we're going to put where we're routing it here and here so we're going to put the from the board here from the speaker here and from the jack here but we're going to um Keep all the orange on one side and all the white on the other. Uh, I've also got a wire already wired to the boards for the center, so I'm going to wire the center board to there and then add two lengths of orange white wire to here. All right, so we've got the switch wired now. We've got six poles, uh, and you can see here that I haven't clipped the uh, wire ends that are soldered on yet. Um, we need to do that so we don't have a short tube. All right, so here's the jack. <clears throat> Again, this is stereo, so we're gonna use this one, which is the tip tip. This is the ring, uh, and this is the shield. We're going to take uh, and solder into this tab for the shield, and we're gonna go the opposite direction from the tab that we want. So this is the tip, we're gonna go to this tab here. All right, now we've made a significant mess, but we've got a working circuit, I think. So we've got audio out of the board into the center of this two pole switch. This way should select one side, this way should select the other. I'm gonna reassemble this enough so that I can use the switches to turn it on and do some testing before I fully reassemble it, but I, I think we're good to go. Don't forget to clean, um, we cleaned this half of the thing. There's switches right here that are very dusty too. They are electrical contacts. We should clean those as well. Tip to clean the contacts on these little weird sliding leaf switches. You can see they're pretty corroded um, and dirty from years of being used. There's another I didn't see and didn't clean last time. All right, those look pretty good. Sometimes you need to burnish these a little if they're giving you trouble. I noticed the volume slider was noisy uh, earlier, uh, but that should be good. Let's put this back together. 
right, we're gonna put these membrane switches back in that we cleaned. Um, you notice there's a pinhole there, there, and there. There's corresponding um, pinholes, uh, pins, little plastic pins sticking up. It, they guide them right into the slot, and then it goes the right direction. So there's another set here. They're kind of offset. Uh, looks like it goes this way. So it looks like the red's facing towards us on the rubber here. Right, let's get those in. Nice. And then the single one for launching the uh, sampler goes in one way also. So the one on the pins should drop right in there. Nice. So we've got the key bed. And the key bed sits on, um, on these little nubs across here. So we've got the buttons in, we've got the sliders cleaned, uh, and we're gonna put the key bed in under here. And sit them on those pins. It kind of balances itself like that. Now, this part's tricky. I've already tried to attach the black keys to this because it's, it's easier, but we may have to kind of finesse it a bit in here. I like to hold my hands on here so that it keeps them from popping out. And then it should just line up on all the pegs and sit down in. It's nice that that went smoothly. Uh, I'm gonna take a second and put in a couple screws here to hold this main board. So the main board screws are the larger of the small screws we took out. Take note, we split out some small ones that came across the key bed. These are the key bed screws. These are the you can see they're a little bit larger. So we're gonna use the larger screw um, and do a couple of the, uh, the edges here. I'm just putting these in so this board doesn't fall out and make us lose our key bed while we're assembling it. Next, we'll put this board back in. This part's a little tricky. Over here, there's a hole. That's where this microphone sits. And then this loose board um, sits on top of it and holds it in place. And then the rest sits on top of that. So I'm gonna try to start that first. Remember to be careful of your ribbons. They're a little bit brittle at this point. So once you get that lined up, take another one of these larger um, board screws. And there's a, actually a hole right on this outside edge. You'll see once you get it lined up, it's the round tab, kind of ear that's sticking out. Um, take one of the board screws and line it up. And drive it down. And then there's a second one on the board screw on the inside. And then that will hold your assembly microphone in place. All right, now that the microphone's secure, I'm gonna secure the key bed. That's these very tiny screws that we took out and laid aside because they are the key bed screws. Let's put them close here and then we'll start to, okay. And then the rest of the board screws on the outside that are still missing. Anything that's under this gray board. Just a note when you're putting this board back on, over here there's a standoff that goes through the board that's more of a support that's not in need of a screw. Uh, and then this one is the actual screw. So if you put a screw in this one, it won't do any good. It's actually to keep the case from crushing. All right, next we need to mark where these are gonna go. So this speaker uh, naturally just fits in its spot. It does not seem to be affixed, it just sits there. So route your cable accordingly. Um, over here, we've got a little more space than up here. So I think we'll put the jack uh, over here. And so we'll have to mark both halves of the case and drill that out. I wonder if we could open this up a little bit and get it to um, kind of mock up a little easier. So if we put this here, the jack will go on this edge. Right here, it's just the side. And this is actually the bottom of the piano. So I think I'll cut a notch here uh, and mount, mount the switch under the speaker. 
um, somewhere around here so you can switch between the two, but on the front face of the keyboard. So let's mark that and we'll cut it um, with, um, we'll cut it with a Dremel or some side cutters or something and clean it up real nice and then we'll mount it. All right, so we've got the holes cut uh, for the switch and the jack and because I am not the most precise hole cutter of keyboards, uh, we're gonna use hot glue gun to reinforce this a bit. So I'm gonna add some, I'm gonna goop some hot glue on here. I'm gonna stick it down. I'm gonna put the ears on the outside. Get as straight as we can. Uh, we'll be using screws as well, but this will help get us a little bit closer. I'm gonna get some glue right in here. Now this, if we let this dry here on this lip too long, we'll have trouble fitting it all together. So let's uh, let's move quickly here. All right. So next, we're going to go here, and we're going to place our jack. I'm going to try to get the washer and the nut on the outside, but I'm not going to tighten it down yet run these wires out of the way. Um, next, we're going to, I'm actually just gonna put a drop of glue on the outside of the speaker here to give me a little advantage so it can hold it. I'll show you that. <clears throat> I put just a tiny bit of glue on the outside, taking care not to connect to the bottom because that's where the, uh, the speaker cone is. This will just hold it in place for a second so I can flip it over. Um, make sure to route your wires away from any of the pinch points. There's a clip, There's a clip right here you can use. All right, so now we're going to try to get the washer and the jack nut on the outside while lining up the rest and getting this thing put back together. Good. All right, <clears throat> now we're assembled again. We need to do a couple more things. We need to tighten up the jack. The jack will be right here. We're gonna take, uh, I'm just gonna use a pair of pliers. Um, I just happen to have video pliers with me. Um, I'm gonna try to add some pressure so I don't spin the jack in the spot, but I'm going to tighten down the nut. Like this. Taking care not to twist the wires on the inside if I can. Once it gets tight enough, I'm going to do this. Seems like it's not moving. There are probably better wrenches to do this with, but that works. The next thing is we're going to put some screws right here to secure this switch a little bit better. Uh, I'm just using these multi-purpose construction screws. My little super hard one. We've got some uh, nice thick teeth. So they should hold. All right. Now this has a power jack, but uh, I'm gonna just use some batteries for right now. Um, if I were to take this somewhere for like a uh, more important sort of live jam or things like that, I would probably suggest using the DC adapter. Although just using the batteries kind of simplifies it for this purpose. Let's check it out. Keys are on, they look pretty good. Try our switch. This is speakers on. We also got the uh, kind of crunch out of the switch. Meow. Cool. But well, why did you do this? What does it sound like now?
I would say that it's probably a project that takes two and a half hours of time uh, with uh, the soldering and the cleanup and, and all of that thing. I did it over a few days. I recorded this video in, in several segments just because of the time I had uh, between work. Um, yeah, it's a very limited sound set that, that you can now use uh, in the workstation to make it sound much different. Uh, you could do it with live sets. You could you know use it as a lead instrument if you want. You could send it into a looper and get some pads out of it. Um, in this video, I had it run through a hologram microcosm. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I do think it's worth the time if you have one of these cool... Um, this works with just about any of these little keyboards. Some of the things I learned on this one is uh, some keyboards you need to step down the amount of uh, signal that goes to the speaker from the board uh, so that it's not too hot coming into the uh, into the studio this particular one the sk10 does not need resistors on the jack so you just can intercept the speaker with your switch or not you could just replace the just tap on the jack where the speaker was if you want if you like this kind of video let me know in the comments uh, and i'll do some more long form things um, these take considerably longer to make so um, i'd like to know that they're worthwhile for somebody um, like and subscribe, all the YouTube uh, call-outs and things that we need at the end of the video, and uh, I'll see you out there. Be kind to one another, and don't trust your technology. See you next time.